Of all of Queen Victoria and Albert's children, several historians believe that her youngest son, Prince Leopold, was the cleverest and the most interesting of all of the young royals. His short life was full of intrigue, drama and a danger that was at the very heart of the British monarchy, despite him never being able to see the British throne. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. The eighth child and second youngest heir of the reign in Queen Victoria and her husband Prince Albert, little Leopold came into the world as something of a medical marvel. Queen Victoria had given birth eight times and she controversially used chloroform as a form of pain relief, which went against the status quo of the public at the time. It was a Christian belief at the time that women were supposed to suffer in childbirth and if they interrupted this natural way of things, there might be divine consequences. Leopold came into the world happy and seemingly healthy and the palace were full of relief. However, this relief did not last very long, as his health took a decline over the years. Victorian concepts of parenting are a lot different than our own today, but the royal household of Queen Victoria was bizarre by any standards. Victoria had outwardly reported how much she despised being both childbearing and large parts of child rearing despite having a large brood of nine children running around. As the eighth child, Leopold was often forgotten and the impact of his birth on his mother may have led her to suffer from postpartum depression. And Leopold's father, Albert, wrote in a letter not long afterwards about Victoria's continuance of hysterics. Victoria played her children off against each other and one way to do this was to put forward her favourite child over the others. Her alleged favourite was Prince Arthur, who she told her husband Prince Albert that out of all of her children, Arthur was dearer than any of the others put together. Leopold was always known to be a sickly boy just like his father. He suffered greatly with anxiety which led to a number of physical problems, such as indigestion, and no matter how much the palace fed him, he remained rail thin and weak. When he was a growing toddler, he started moving around and he would bruise very easily and suffer major injuries at the smallest of falls. It wasn't long before Victoria and Albert searched for answers and came to a disturbing conclusion that his illness was a fatal one. A dark secret clouded the royal family whereby the males born to the many match-made couples that descended from Queen Victoria would suffer from a genetic disease called haemophilia, which prevents blood from clotting properly. Victoria had passed this on to her son and suddenly the prince's dangerous falls and sickly disposition made all too much sense. Unfortunately for little Prince Leopold, the dangerous impacts of haemophilia manifest in men and not women, and it was soon very clear that the princeling was in fatal danger at all moments of the day. Victoria did worry constantly about his internal bleeding, and nobody believed that he would survive into adulthood. As well as this condition passed from his mother, Medical professionals also believed that the prince was suffering from another illness. Leopold would suffer from fits, which led them to believe he had epilepsy, which at the time was a sign that he was cursed or bewitched. The family did not deal with his depositions very well, with his mother taking full control over his life. Queen Victoria was very protective of her son, and she kept him practically under lock and key, and from the moment he could crawl, he had a whole team of doctors constantly checking up on him and making sure that the royal didn't have a hair out of place. Leopold was only eight years old when his father died in 1861. Albert was only 42 when the Grim Reaper came knocking 
and his passing through Queen Victoria into a notorious state of mourning. Prince Leopold had not only inherited his sickly disease from his mother, but he had also inherited her looks. His wide, heavy-lidded eyes, the set of his small mouth, and his oval face as well as Victoria's light hair. As a male member of the monarchy, it was tradition for the princes to form part of the military, but due to his condition, his mother banned him from all military service, accepting some honorary positions that were merely symbolic. All of his brothers went on to have some form of military service, which must have been bittersweet for him to witness, and a massive downer to his ego, and something that likely humiliated the young Victorian man. So something had to give. Leopold could not be physical in any way, and so he turned his attention to his mental capabilities. The prince had the best tutors royalty could buy, but no less than the poet Laurit Alfred. Lord Tennyson noted the boy's quick mind and immense capacity for learning. Despite being academically bright, this did not rid him of his rebellious nature. As a teenager, he began to grow tired of his mother's watchful and overbearing eye, and so he became a college boy. He had to beg and plead with Queen Victoria to let him attend the University of Oxford out in the world. Victoria finally relented when he was 19 and Leopold got a tiny taste of what independence felt like. Still feeling constrained by his mother's watchful eye, Leopold went to drastic measures to win his full freedom. He made the decision that getting married was his only hope of getting out and he started his quest for a wife by looking around Europe for a royal bride. As a Prince of England, Leopold should obviously have no trouble at finding a wife, right? His secret illness was no longer a secret, which meant that unfortunately for Leopold, he wasn't exactly the most eligible bachelor. As a result, he went through a painful number of options, including the heiress Daisy Maynard and Princess Frederica of Hanover, but all of them rejected him for one reason or another. Then his meddling mother got involved in the matchmaking process and set him up on a blind date. She was actually extremely good at her matchmaking, and after watching him fail over and over again, she soon suggested that Leopold meet up with Princess Helena, the daughter of a German prince and one of Leopold's distant cousins. The German princess had a bad reputation in England for being frigid and distant, but the truth couldn't have been further from this gossip. She was the exact opposite, she loved being among the people. Helena was also very beautiful, and therefore she was absolutely perfect for Leopold. Princess Helena was, was unusually and shockingly educated for a woman of her time, as she could compete with her match on an intellectual level. She loved math and philosophy, and Leopold was impressed with her. He was completely delighted with her, and he even introduced Helena to his academic circle of friends from Oxford. Obviously, Helena impressed them mightily because she continued lifelong friendships with the group. Join me in part two to learn about how his family life developed with Helena and how he would never live long enough to meet his son due to his declining health. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.